Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Norman Lepore. He's a cardiologist and the clinical investigator in the Phase 3 clinical program for LecVio. He's going to talk about the recent FDA approval for that compound. Uh, it's, uh, it's indicated to lower bad cholesterol and keep it low with two doses a year after an initial dose and one at three months. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Norman Lepore. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Well, a cardiologist, a clinical investigator in this phase three clinical program for LecVio, give us a little bit of insight into why LecVio's FDA approval is important for healthcare providers. So it's actually an excellent question. And uh, the reason why LecVio has its unique importance in terms of combating uh, coronary and vascular disease, which in the United States affects you know, over 30 million people, is that it provides a very potent agent to a lower LDL cholesterol. The lowering is somewhere about 52%. And uh, this is, you know, on, this is on top of patients who should be taking maximally tolerated statin mm-hmm. therapy who either are heterozygotes or familial hyperlipidemia, which is a genetic uh, defect responsible for very high cholesterol. So those patients who have atherosclerotic coronary vascular disease. So, so LecVio is, is meant to, be, to supplement really our cornerstone therapy, which is a statin-based as well as lifestyle modification. Big problem, though, with, uh, with uh, getting to our goals in terms of low-density LDL or low-density lipoprotein is that most patients don't achieve that goal. And uh, second of all, often even the ones that do don't continue on therapy. Many patients feel, for instance, once they get to a, a good level, they don't have to take the medicines. Over 50% of patients who even have had heart attacks uh, after one year of following the heart attack have stopped their statins and other uh, treatments mm-hmm. for cholesterol. And what's uh, unique about Lecvio is that it will be taken twice a year as a subcutaneous injection in the doctor's office or, or in an infusion center. So basically, the drug has an effect lasting six months. So this really takes uh, this really takes a big bite out of the problem with compliance, and because uh, right. you know if your patient comes in and gets the uh, treatment that they're covered uh, for six months. Is it the dose or the the strength of the dose that is the most important thing? It's not administered as a normal statin. It's not administered orally. It's it's in a, an injection. How does it actually work? Even though it's that high a dosage, as opposed to normal statin therapies. So, so normal statin therapies are pills. What they do is they slow the liver's production of cholesterol. And, uh, and, and since the liver has actually an appetite for cholesterol, the liver is really the, the clearinghouse where cholesterol is made and then where cholesterol is actually uh, destroyed or metabolized. So what happens is the statins do a, a pretty good job of uh, lowering cholesterol by virtue of blocking a step in, in the pathway, the, we call the synthetic pathway for cholesterol. And then as a result, because the liver says, hey, I want, I want, uh, you're not, I don't, I have an appetite for cholesterol. What happens is the liver puts out more of these receptors or what we call fishing rods on its surface where it actually grabs uh, cholesterol, LDL cholesterol in the circulation, brings it into the liver where it's broken down. So that's how statins work. What's unique about Lexio, first off, as you mentioned, it's a subcutaneous uh, injection. So a patient will get it in their office, the first uh, injection, and then they come back in three months for sort of a booster-like injection. And then it's every six months. And the way a Lexio works, it's, uh, it, it basically gets into the, uh, the, the liver cells And what the liver cells do is they also make a certain protein. It's a protein called TCSK9. And what's what's we don't like about this protein is it actually gets in the way of that receptor, the liver receptor, uh, being able to work hard to pick up the circulating bad cholesterol or LDL in the circulation. So the LDL receptor is kind of like a fishing rod for for the LDL cholesterol, grabs it, brings it into the liver cell where it's been broken down. And what happens if you have this, and we all have this PCSK9 protein that's made by our liver cells, and what the PCSK9 protein does, it actually interferes uh, with that receptor. So it, it doesn't allow that receptor to recirculate and therefore grab cholesterol. Now, what's unique about Lexio is it actually uh, gets into uh, the, uh, the liver cell where it blocks 
the actual synthesis or the creation of this PCSK9 protein by virtue of being what they call a small interfering RNA. So it actually um, blocks the transition from DNA to RNA to the protein being synthesized. And this leads to uh, a basically almost a cessation of this PCSK9 protein being synthesized, and this allows that receptor on the liver cell to be recirculated up to 150 times and increase incredibly the efficiency of the liver to remove uh, LDL cholesterol. And what makes the what makes the uh, a compound last the six months is that it's very specific in terms of getting into the liver and uh, its impact in terms of blocking the production of uh, PCSK9. Uh, therefore last uh, for that six-month period of time. Is this indicated for patients who, as you say, are non-compliant for any number of reasons, or is this something that is indicated if you just want to stop taking statins every day or however your physician has you on the statins? So, you know, what we, we all, as a cardiologist and as someone who's an expert in treating lipids, we, we want patients to be on statins and we want them to be on their maximally tolerated dose. Statins have been around since the early 1990s, tremendous data. Um, but we know um, that there are some patients who just don't like taking pills or aren't particularly compliant with taking pills. And we know that there's about 10 to 15 percent of patients who uh, may develop side effects from the statins, most particularly um, muscle achiness. So it's not, it, we don't tell patients, hey, you know, because you don't like taking statins, you know, a uh, preference, you know, go ahead and take Lexio. We really want patients to take the statins. Now, if they don't tolerate it, certainly, you know, what we call maximally tolerated statin dose could be zero if they absolutely get muscle aches, you know, after trying multiple statins. And certainly the drug would be perfectly uh, useful uh, in those particular patients um, to lower their cholesterol levels. But we do like to supplement um, the, the, the use of statins because we know that statins um, prevent heart attacks and prevent strokes, and they're very inexpensive. So we certainly don't want to abandon um, those mainstay therapies. And I think what Lecbio does, it actually allows us to much more be be much more able to attain the LDL treatment goals because even on patients who are getting full doses of statins, there's a large proportion of patients, even if they're compliant with a high dose, uh, what we call high intensity statin, they're not able to achieve uh, the goal LDL levels. So this is not something that is indicated for someone who has just been diagnosed with a cholesterol problem. You can, you know, what you would do if you have somebody who was just diagnosed with a cholesterol issue, uh, let's say they've had a heart attack or a stroke or they have plaque on a, on a coronary calcium scan or on a coronary CT angiogram or on a carotid ultrasound, you know, what you would generally do is you would put those patients um, on statins and uh, see if you could attain, you know, the LDL treatment goal. And the LDL treatment goal, you know, for those patients who have atherosclerotic coronary vascular disease, is certainly to get their LDLs less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. And if you have even other uh, risk factors such as diabetes or uh, and, and you know chronic kidney disease, you may even want to uh, reduce your LDL cholesterol, depending on these other risk factors, to lower than even 40 milligrams per deciliter. So uh, we know that uh, we're not able to attain those levels oftentimes with with a statin, but we still want these patients placed on statin therapy, and then uh, once they attain their maximally tolerated dose, then uh, certainly there's no need to delay uh, the use of a drug like a Lecvio uh, for those patients, number one, because uh, of its, of its uh, effectiveness in terms of LDL reduction and the fact that it does really uh, re resolve, for the most part, a large issue, which is, which is patient compliance. Give us a website where we can learn more. If someone were to Google uh, Lecbio, there's there's a tremendous amount of uh, of information online regarding this. Great. Well, Dr. Lepore, I appreciate you joining us here and giving us giving us some of your time this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Norman Lepore. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.